Hi, in this video I will demonstrate how to read and interpret a knowledge graph, which can be very useful for researchers, marketing professionals, and people who like to think about different ideas. We'll be using an app that's called Infranodus that represents a text as a network, but you can use this approach with any knowledge graph visualization tool. I will explain how to detect the main ideas inside, how to retrieve information about the most prominent relations between the concepts, also how to identify the clusters of ideas that uh, tend to appear together, and also how you can use all this to generate really valuable insights for any field you're in. So if you're interested to learn how it works, keep watching and I will demonstrate step by step. Also please subscribe to this channel so that this video can get recommended to others interested in the same topic. First, we need to get some content in. And it can be really any content. It can be a PDF document, your own thoughts, notes. But it, for this example, I will be using Google search results for AI automation. Why? Because I think it's a great way to study the current informational supply for a topic. And if I'm interested in that, I want to see what exists out there already so I can understand the market, the offer, and also I can identify the gaps in this market and in the offer. So that would be an example that maybe is particularly interested for, for marketing people, but also for researchers as well, because uh, you always want to target those gaps. I will click Visualize, and what happens next is that Infranodus extracts the top 40 search results for this query, AI automation, and represents the words or the lemmas as the nodes and the co-occurrences are the connection. So for example, when we get search results for AI automation, the word automate, it appears quite a lot, but also technology, uh, also human, and so on, right? So we can quickly see what are the main ideas inside. Let me explain how this graph is actually created first, because I think it's very important for understanding how knowledge graphs work and for understanding also how to extract meaningful, useful insights from them. So by default, if you just visualize the words as the nodes and the co-occurrences as the connection, you would just have a spaghetti of ideas aligned in a random way. Here it's a circle, so it's a bit better, but it's still quite hard to get some meaningful insights from it. So this is why one of the most popular algorithms for aligning nodes in the graph, it's called Force Atlas Layout. And that's what we use in Infranodus, and that's what most other tools use. Force Atlas Layout algorithm does the following. It identifies the nodes that have the most connections, so some kind of hubs, and pushes them apart from each other. And those nodes or concepts that connect to those highly connected nodes will be aligned next to them. And this kind of gives you a really nice representation of clusters of ideas. So for example, we see here that the word automate, it appears often among different clusters, right? So it's kind of like a connecting word. It has a lot of influence, obviously, because we're searching for AI automation. Whereas content management and also productivity is kind of like a peripheral cluster. It means that uh, those words, they appear more often together, but not with the rest of the search results. So that also gives us an idea which clusters are a little bit more peripheral. And how I like to think about knowledge graphs or text network representation is to think through the prism of social network analysis, because this is also where this is coming from, right? Um, if the words are the people, then this graph represents uh, which words like to hang out together, right? So for example, we would see that the word content likes to hang out with the word management and Airtable, and they really spend a lot of time together. Whereas words like job and expert, they like to hang out together, but not with the rest of the people. And this is how the groups are formed. And of course, then once you analyze the graph of ideas in this way, you would be able to quickly see which groups of words could be connected because there could be some really interesting benefit to connect those different groups together. For instance, here, if we have content management cluster, which is a cluster of those words in the periphery here, right? So we have content management and then here we have product integration, for instance. They're both on the periphery, they're connected to one another. But they, they could be developed further in an interesting way because maybe it represents uh, some really interesting aspect of this topic, which is not integrated into the discourse. So if you integrate it more into the discourse, then you could provide some really uh, good value for some people interested in that stuff. On the opposite side, if you have, for instance, here machine learning and let's say content management here, they're also not so well connected. They're a bit on the opposite side of the periphery and we only have the word 
transform, which is connecting them together. So that means there is also a high potential in connecting those groups of words that like to hang out together. So if you think of text networks or knowledge graphs as social networks, it makes it much easier to understand intuitively what's going on. And I also want to make a note here that a lot of people think when they see these visualizations that these are word embeddings. These are not word embeddings. Because uh, if it were word embeddings, we would then have a simplified 2D representation of a multidimensional space. But uh, it wouldn't matter which text we analyze, because uh, each text would have more or less the same uh, set of words, maybe with slight differences. But we would still have the words in the same embedding space, right? So, for example, I would still see automate human intelligence, for instance, in one tool. Uh, in, in one text and then I would see it in another and it wouldn't really give me important contextual information about this particular text. So that's why co-occurrences in this case work much better because you see the contextual information about this particular text. You see which words in this text, in this particular text, like to hang out together. Not in general in the world or in the training data. That's what the embeddings show. Embeddings show which words like to hang out together in general in the training set. Here, we're just looking at this context. I think it's a very important distinction, and I would like to emphasize it once again, that these are word co-occurrences, and they actually work much better when you want to analyze a specific discourse, because you only see information from that text. Of course, then you can use the AI to also get the embeddings in, but that's a subject for another video. So, we have this representation. The words are aligned according to Force Atlas algorithm. We see which words are more important. They're shown bigger on the graph. And we see which words like to hang out together. They're shown with distinct colors in the graph. And they're also closer to each other. A note on how we calculate the relevance of the node. So most graphs, they use the measure of degree, so how many connections the word has. In other words, it, it would be frequency, right? Here, we're using between a centrality, which is a much more interesting measure of influence. And a simple way to explain it is to say, OK, these are the words of the people that like to hang out with the most diverse set of groups of words, right? So if I give you an analogy from social network, these are the people that know a lot of people but from really different communities. And this is why they're so highly relevant, because they can connect those different groups together. Obviously, here it's AI automation, so the word automate has high influence because it connects uh, multiple of those different clusters together. So that is how the relevance is calculated. Technically, the measure is called between a centrality, and it's a measure that we use that comes from network science. And technically, it means uh, which nodes appear most often on the shortest path between two randomly chosen nodes in the network. In a more simple way, I can explain it like this. If we choose, let's say, work and replace, what would be the word on the shortest path between them? If we don't connect them directly, that would appear in between. So here we see that probably it would be human in that case. That's why human has a high relevance, also task, and so on. So this is how you would identify the influence of the words. And this is why a word like content, which might have a lot of connections, is smaller because it has only local influence. It connects mainly to one group, you see? It also connects to another group, but not so much. Whereas automate has a much diverse range of connections because we see it connects to different clusters. So that's a very interesting insight, an important insight for us to uh, calculate relevance and importance in this way between a centrality influence. How are the clusters calculated? That's another approach. So if you use any other tool, uh, it would just show you clusters based on Force Atlas layout, which is great because you can already see uh, that, for example, here community uh, nodes, they tend to appear in the same context, right? So for example, if we take this one, productivity integration, this is the cluster of nodes that like to appear together. But the colors give us this additional insight into how dense those connections are. Because if we just push them apart, you see, for instance, the word community is kind of in between. But here, it is actually identified as part of this cluster. And for that, we use modularity algorithm. You can actually read more about it if you click on the question mark here. We explain with all the references how all those stuff are calculated, so you can read the scientific papers on the subject. But here I just want to say that adding this additional modularity algorithm that's used in network science to identify clusters is really useful because 
it stops being just a qualitative uh, visual thing and it becomes something that is ma mathematically calculated and that can be also consistent among different graphs, right? So this is the algorithms we use to represent that. Once we have this information, once we understand the layout, once we understand how the nodes or the words are arranged by size based on their influence, and once we understand what are the different clusters representing, we can start extracting some interesting insights from this graph. So my first insight would be to understand, okay, what are the main topics around AI automation here? And I can just start looking at the graph and see, okay, so a lot of people are talking about automate, obviously, artificial intelligence. Okay, that makes sense. Content management, that is also interesting. Then let me deselect those. Communities, so probably some resources, communities online, schools that teach people how to do that. Um, also some more technical stuff on computer, machine learning and so on. So I see that there is a cluster on technical stuff, jobs here and so on. So that gives me a really nice overview, like a map, a conceptual map of the search results for this topic and I understand what's on the offer on the market at the moment, right? One useful thing that you can do with the graph, and not many graphs allow you this, but Infranodos can do that, is that you, you can actually delete the words that you find not so relevant to your research. So for example here, automate is kind of like a synonym to AI automation, so I will add it to the list of hidden words. And once I do that, everything is recalculated. The influence of the nodes, the community structure and so on. And that's very interesting because if you use this analogy of words as uh, people, you would be able to understand this. Like what happens if you remove this person from this community? What will be the connections that will then emerge because of that? They're not there anymore, so what are the other connections that are highly relevant? And this provides you a really nice contextual insight on any topic, any cluster, any group, any multiplicity, right? And once we remove that, we see that, okay, there is also artificial intelligence that emerges. We need to get rid of that as well, temporarily, just, just because AI is already that. And you would also some, sometimes need to clean up the graph a little bit by removing some artifacts. Like, for instance, in Google search results, you have this names of the months. So you need to also hide that, July, like we're not interested in that. March, here. And you don't have to do too much, but just some most visible stuff. It's nice to delete here. Also, I saw this G, which I didn't understand what it is, but it's actually quite important. I think it's uh, some kind of field, so this we keep. All right, now that we removed and cleaned the data a little bit, everything is recalculated, and we have a much clearer idea of the main ideas. Uh, we have uh, web automation, human task, job, and so on. So it's kind of like this idea how you can get rid of the repetitive human tasks using the automation. So it's probably search results that tell us uh, what AI automation is and what it does. Machine learning, so the technical aspect of how that works. Productivity tools, which also includes Airtable management content system. So these are software solutions uh, that use AI automation. Future solutions, so this, this kind of idea of what's possible in the future. And then you have more topics here. Uh, one that could be interesting is, for example, this one, machine learning again, but it's talking about community. So we also see that a lot of people are working on creating communities to learn machine learning and to learn how AI automation works. So already with that insight, I can say as a marketing person or as a, someone who's interested in research, I can see that there's a lot of technical stuff on this. Um, and particularly interesting are the content management and creation tools. Airtable also is quite a popular one. So that means that this is the software that people use already a lot for AI automation. And we also have this community, YouTube community, school resources and so on. So that also gives us an idea that a lot of people are offering communities that teach you how to use all those new tools and uh, AI automation. And then there is another cluster on the scientific aspect of that. So that's pretty interesting. It gives me a really good representation of the current field and that's already actionable insight. If I want to contribute to that field, I need to know what already exists, and I probably need to present something that would either provide a really good recap of what's already there, if people just want an overview, or I need to start connecting those ideas in an interesting way. And this is what I would do next. I would look and into the structure and be like, okay, so if uh, there is someone talking about web automation, machine learning, 
these are quite connected. You see they, they, they have a link, although not so much. Productivity tools, also future solutions. But for example, if I look into this cluster of machine learning that was actually talking about communities and for instance, productivity tools, web automation, let's take web automation here. Those are not connected at all. So I would say that it could be interesting to provide content that would connect uh, the, the explanation of what AI automation is and how it can get rid of the repetitive human tasks and increase productivity, but to do it in the shape of some kind of online community or courses, because even though those results exist, they're not using the same language in the same context, right? So maybe I should focus more on providing uh, some kind of learning courses or uh, a community of people to join, to learn how to automate their tasks, right? So that would be my actionable insight from here. Uh, create an online community, subscription base that would teach people how to perform those repetitive tasks, maybe make it a bit less technical than the others, because you see on this non-technical connection, like it doesn't really exist. I think the ones that exist right now, uh, they use all this specialized lingo, like web automation, machine learning, Actually, also not. So that's another gap. I should make it both accessible to technical and non-technical people. And that would be my insight for how I would identify this gap. And this is how you would use this graph layout, for atlas layout, to see which, what are the clusters that are at the periphery, and then how you could connect them in an interesting way uh, in order to generate new ideas and new products. You actually have this feature inside Infranodus already in the blind spots. Uh, it identifies those blind spots for you and then you can reiterate through them um, and then see which ones have the highest distance. So for example, there was one here that I found quite interesting. Productivity tools and machine learning. So, so those communities about machine learning, how they could, use, could be used to improve workflows uh, and automate decision making. For instance, I see here, right? So, a lot of really interesting ideas that I can write down. I can use the project notes to write that down here. And uh, there I can start working from there, reiterate, import more search results, and get more ideas. So this is how I would find those gaps, identify which ones are not connected, and then generate some ideas to make those connections. I like to do that myself, but for those who don't have enough time to do that, you can also use the built-in AI that will generate some ideas for you. Uh, it generates questions to help you think in this direction. If you want, you can change the module to, to a chat, and then it's just going to generate some idea for you or even like a business idea if you shift to another mode, right? So, for example, if you click Ideate, it's going to come up with some app idea or, or really like, like a product idea that would help connect those two topics together. So, for example, here. It says, create an AI-powered platform that enables users to generate automated social media content by repurposing YouTube video insights. Offer a better program for community feedback and integrate with educational resources on AI automation from YouTube and School for Learning and Improvement. Now you can copy and paste it into something like uh, um, Claude or B0 and it will generate an app for you like that. So that's where you could use it to generate some product ideas. Just generate something, then plug it into another tool that would create a dashboard for you, reiterate and create a tool that would uh, make it happen. So this is how that would work. Another thing I would like to demonstrate is how to use this in a 3D dimension with some other data. So that's kind of like a bonus track, but it's always good to repeat uh, ideas because then it lets us remember them better. So if you watched up to that part, you are in the lucky 25% of viewers who managed to make it so far, and I'm going to provide some bonus content. So this here is the Infranodos uh, Obsidian plugin that you can also download on our website. It works absolutely in the same way, but the advantage here is that you can use your Obsidian content in real time. So here, I like to organize my ideas in folders, and I have a folder here on different ideas that I'm thinking about in relation to nutrition. So I can just click on that folder and then go to open in front of this graph and it's going to visualize all the documents I have in this folder as the graph. And then I approach it absolutely in the same way. One, 
important aspect here is that it visualizes not only the words, but also those uh, wiki links that are used in Obsidian to uh, represent pages, right? And right now I have a setting in Infranodus that it visualizes both the concepts and the wiki links, but I can also go here and say that I only want to visualize wiki links, and then if I choose only wiki links, then it's going to generate the connections only between the wiki links that uh, exist in that folder, right? So that will make a, a much cleaner graph that is only visualizing the ideas that you um, highlighted, especially. And here we approach it in absolutely the same way. We first look at the four Atlas layout. It's the same as we had in the previous version, just in 3D. We see that, okay, there are some important ideas like FODMAP diet, folic acid, which is an element, spinach, which is uh, food, right, then folates. And I already can see that, okay, so uh, these are all the different dyes, but for example, the whole cluster on folates is a little bit far away from the rest. So that would be an indication for me that I need to connect them a little bit better, right, because they're not so well connected yet. So that, that would be a really interesting thing for me to do, to see how, how I can link them together in, in a much better way. Then another thing that I could do is to also say, okay, I would like to see what are the main clusters of topics. So here I can reset everything, go to topics, and then here I would have a representation of the main topics, which exists here. So, so for example, I have FODMAP diet here, dairy, alternatives, um, maybe here this pink one is FODMAPs again. Uh, these are probably dairy alternatives. What is this red one if I click here? Green tea benefits. So for example, if I see something I like, I can deselect the previous ones, go to the green tea benefits, and here I have the context button which shows me the statements from Obsidian that contain this. So that also becomes a really nice way to explore the graph and to explore your ideas in a nonlinear way by selecting the topics you're interested in and zooming in on them to see what they're about. And you also have this gaps feature here that allows you to reiterate through the different gaps and see what are the topics that are not so well connected. So for example, what is the connection between FODMAP diet and folate deficiency, right? You can look at the context to see what are the statements that should be connected, and then maybe it will give you some ideas, or you can use the built-in AI and ask it to generate a research question that would link those ideas for you. So uh, then uh, here it asks, for instance, how does a low FODMAP diet impact folate levels in individuals potentially affecting the risk for neural tube defects and overall health? That's a great question. You could even copy this question and then send it to your favorite uh, AI tool or even use it inside Infranodus itself and generate an answer to that. So this is how it would work. It's absolutely the same approach, even though that's a three-dimensional graph, right? But the approach is the same. You first look at the whole structure, see if you find some interesting patterns, see what are the main, most relevant ideas, also detect what are the ideas at the periphery of the graph because that probably means you need to develop them further and to also connect them to the ones that are in the center. And this is also what Infranodus is recommending here is that you need to connect them together, right? So then it's gonna highlight for you what needs to be connected. So it already gives you an advice of what to do, right? And then you move further by generating more ideas, more insights, and then identifying more gaps and reiterating this process in a way where you uh, can add more interesting insights into your research. So this is how it would work. I hope that you find this demonstration interesting. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments to this video below. Also, please subscribe to this channel so that it can get recommended to others. And let me know if there are any topics you would like me to cover in the future videos. Thank you.